Hello, and welcome to another Digital Differential Equations lecture video for Salt Lake Community College. In this video, we are going to be going through Chapter 5.3 and looking at eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In Chapter 5.3, we study a special type of linear transformation from Rn into Rn. And so I'm specifically talking about a vector space onto itself again. In this transformation, the matrix A associated with the transformation will be square. With this type of transformation, we will be interested in vectors that remain parallel to the original vectors after the transformation. These vectors are called the eigenvectors and will have a corresponding eigenvalue. Consider the transformation T that maps R2 onto itself. Defined by the matrix of transformation given here. In general, T maps vectors U to T of U that points in a different direction. For example, if you apply T to the vector 1, 0, you'll get back to vector 1, 2. So the vector 1, 0 pointing in the, this direction got translated to a vector or transformed to a vector pointing in this direction. Similarly, the vector 0, 1 points straight up, but the transformation of this vector points in another direction. Or the vector negative 1, negative 1. The transformation of this vector points to the left, to the point negative 3, 0. For some vectors, such as 2, 1, and 1, negative 2, the transformation reduces to a scalar multiplication of the original vector. When we apply t to 1, 2, we get back 4, 2. Notice that this is 2 times the original vector, and graphically this shows that the, the new vector is parallel, or 2 times longer than the original vector, but it's a scalar multiple of it. Similarly, t of negative 1, 2 is going to become negative 3, 6, which is negative 3 times the original vector. So the vector negative 1, 1, negative 2 that pointed in this direction got transformed to a vector pointing in this direction. But notice that it's still parallel to itself. It's a scalar multiple of itself. Vectors such as these are called eigenvectors, and their corresponding multipliers are called the eigenvalues. These are useful in understanding the mapping and important in several applications. Specifically, Given a square matrix A that defines a linear transformation from a vector space onto itself, its eigenvectors are vectors that are mapped onto multiples of themselves. A scalar lambda is going to be an eigenvalue of the transformation if there is a non-zero eigenvector such that the transformation of that vector v is a scaled version of that v. If the transformation matrix, or if the transformation t is represented by an n by n matrix A, then lambda and v are characterized by the equation 
a v is equal to lambda v. Let's look at a first example. Let's verify that the vector 2 1 really is an eigenvector of the linear transformation defined by this matrix A and let's find the corresponding eigenvalue. So here what I'm trying to show is that when you apply T to the vector 2 1 we can multiply that vector by our transformation matrix. Now remember when you multiply by a matrix, the way we've been doing is we've been multiplying this row times this corresponding column, adding up the entries as we went. So I think this would be 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is the vector is the value 8 and then our second row times this column this would be 6 minus 2 is 4 Notice that you can factor out a common factor, a scalar of 4, and we'll get back the original vector 2, 1. So we can say, yes, the vector Two one is an eigenvector with a corresponding eigenvalue I can't spell corresponding though corresponding n eigenvalue lambda that's 4. Now in general we're not going to be given these eigenvalues or eigenvectors. We have to find them on our own. So let's look at a method for how to find these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. find these eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we want oh, let me change my pen size here we want to find a vector x and a eigenvalue lambda that satisfy ax is equal to lambda x. Notice that this is an equation with two unknowns. In general, know that we will know the matrix A, but we won't know x and we won't know lambda. To solve this equation, what we'll do is we'll move everything to the left-hand side of the equal sign and write this as AX minus lambda X equals zero. And this is zero, the vector. Because AX is going to be a vector and lambda X is a vector. And so when you subtract these two vectors, you get back a vector. Now, what you may want to do is factor out a common value of x. 
But you can't do this, because if you factor out an x, then you'd be left with a minus lambda times x equals 0. And this line does not make sense. We have never talked about how to subtract a lambda, a scalar, from a matrix. So this line doesn't make sense. To resolve this issue, we're going to insert the identity matrix in between lambda and x. Where we can justify this is still equivalent because the identity matrix times any vector is that same vector by definition of what the identity matrix is. So inserting this matrix I does not change equality. Which means our actual next line looks like A minus lambda I times X equals zero. Now, we want non-trivial solutions to this equation, which means we want to find vectors x that are not the zero vector. Because if x was the zero vector, then this matrix times x would always equal zero trivially because anything times zero is always equal to zero. So we're looking for non-trivial solutions, vectors where x is not zero. This will only occur when the coefficient matrix a minus lambda i is singular. Now I treat this as a singular as a single matrix because recall a is going to be a matrix that'll be given to us lambda i this is going to be a matrix and so a minus lambda i is still a matrix. So although not written with a single letter this all represents a single matrix and you'll see this when we start doing our examples. So we're going to get non-trivial solutions when a minus lambda i is singular. Now recall this means that that a minus lambda i inverse does not exist. There is no inverse. This also means that the determinant of a minus lambda i will have to equal zero. And this is now zero the scalar, because remember the determinant is always going to be a number. Another way to say this is that this only happens when a minus lambda i has free variables when you look at the RREF. Okay. This gives us a method for finding our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. To find the eigenvalues, we are going to find
the eigenvalues such that the determinant of a minus lambda i will equal to zero. So we're going to find when this determinant is zero. Then we can find the corresponding eigenvectors by looking at the equation a minus lambda i x is equal to zero. Then these will be referred to as an eigenvalue eigenvector pair. Let's look at a first example. Consider the transformation T that maps R2 onto R2 defined by this matrix A. So this is your matrix of transformation. The first thing that we would like to be able to do is find your eigenvalues. To find our eigenvalues, we require that the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. This is going to be the determinant of A, our original matrix, one, one, four, one, minus lambda times the identity matrix. Notice that you can multiply the scalar lambda into the identity matrix, which will give us the determinant of one, one, four, one minus the matrix with lambdas down the main diagonal. We require this determinant to equal zero. So now maybe we could subtract our two matrices and write this just as one minus lambda, one, four, one minus lambda. Notice I've changed my determinant notation here. Now after doing a couple of problems, most students will probably jump right to this line. Since when you look at a minus lambda i, you'll always be subtracting lambda off of the main diagonal only. So this will be a nice shortcut for you. Now recall that for a two by two matrix, the determinant will be the product of your main diagonal. So one minus lambda times one minus lambda minus the product of your off diagonal. So this will be one minus lambda times another one minus lambda minus four equals zero. If you were to multiply these out, you think you'd get one minus two lambda plus lambda squared minus four. And if I rewrite this quadratic in descending order, I think we get lambda squared minus two lambda minus three equals zero. This is referred to as your characteristic polynomial in lambda. And for a two by two matrix, this is always gonna be a quadratic. Maybe this quadratic will be factorable, maybe it won't, and you'll have to use the quadratic formula. However, this particular quadratic is factorable as lambda minus three, lambda plus one. 
this gives us two eigenvalues. Lambda 1 is equal to 3 and lambda 2 is equal to negative 1. These are the two eigenvalues associated with this linear transformation. Okay, now we move forward and we look for our eigenvectors. Our eigenvectors must satisfy a minus lambda i times some vector is now the zero vector. And we'll look at this equation for both lambdas. Let's look at, let's look at lambda 1 equals 3 first. Now recall, to save us a little bit of time, that a minus lambda i this is a minus lambda i, always subtracts lambda, your eigenvalue, off of the main diagonal only. So when you subtract lambda off the main diagonal, this is going to give us a new equation. So let's look at, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at that same previous line here. When you subtract lambda off the main diagonal, you'll have in the first entry 1 minus lambda, 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, 1, 4, and then 1 minus lambda, 1 minus 3 is again negative 2. Times some vector x, which I'm going to write as x comma y, and this has to equal the 0 vector. Now it's worth noting that the matrix A minus lambda I, this matrix, this must be singular. Or put another way, your determinant must be zero. And there's a couple of ways you can confirm that. Take your determinant. Here your determinant would be the product of your main diagonal, which is going to be 4, minus your off diagonal, negative 4, which is 0, which confirms that it's 0. Or you can confirm that this is singular because one of the columns is a multiple of the other. Notice that column 1 is negative 2 times column 2. Two. that v1 is negative 2 times v2, meaning these columns are not linearly independent. And if they're not linearly independent, then this matrix is going to be singular. Now what we want to find is a non-trivial vector x that makes this equation valid. And generally this is easiest, or most easiest done by inspection. You're looking for a vector x, y that when you multiply this matrix you get zero. This is equal to saying x times your first column plus y times your second column has to equal zero. And what I'll generally do is just look at maybe just one line of this equation. What would you multiply by negative 2 and then multiply by y by 1 so that this equals 0? And if it works for this first row, it'll work for the second row as well. So I'm saying what if you let x be 1? Then this first will entry will be negative 2. What does y have to be so that this product will make it be 0? And I'd like to say, well, let's let y equal 2. 
so that if x is 1 and y is 2, this first entry will be 0. Similarly, if x is 1 and y is 2, the second entry will be 0. And this will always work. This is your eigenvector associated with your eigenvalue. It's your first eigenpair. Now we'll have to do the same thing for the other eigenvalue. For eigenvalue 2, that's negative 1. Now remember, we always subtract lambda off the main diagonal. But here lambda is negative, so we're subtracting a negative number. This will make our matrix look like 2, 1, 4, and 2. Times some vector xy has to equal the zero vector. And we're looking for a non-trivial vector x that'll make this equal to zero. Sometimes it's helpful to write this as a matrix multiplication or to multiply this matrix out. Write it as x times your first vector plus y times your second vector. And this has to be zero. Now by inspection, again, I want to ask, what do you multiply by two? What could x be? What do you multiply by 1? What would y be? So that when you add these together, you get 0. So I'm going to say, well, what if x is 1? If x is 1, then this first product is going to be 2. So I need y. I need this to be negative 2. And that's your second eigenvector that's associated with lambda 2 equals negative 1. Now the last thing we're going to be asked to do in our homework is to look at your eigenspaces. Your eigenspaces are going to be a visual representation of all the different eigenvectors we could have used. So I should note that there was nothing particularly special about this vector 1, 2 that we chose in our last, uh, for our last eigenvector. There are other vectors we could have used. For example, we could have used the vector 2, negative 4. If you multiply 2 times 2, our first part, this is 4, and then negative 4 times 1, and then add these together, this is still 0. And technically, there are an infinite number of eigenvectors that would have worked for this equation. These are represented by your eigenspaces. So you're, to find your eigenspaces or to represent them, you'll take your first vector 1, negative 2, which points 1 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction going down. And it's going to be a vector that points, let me try and draw the best vector I can, here. Now your eigenspace are all the other vectors that we could have used. They're all the vectors that would be parallel to this one. And so we'll represent this. We write this as E, and we write the eigenvalue that it's associated with, so negative 1. And this represents all the vectors V such that AV is equal to negative 1v. 
these are all the values that would have been, or these are all the vectors that would have satisfied this original equation. There will be an infinite number of them. Similarly, our first eigenvector, 1, 2, 1 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, it'd be a vector that points here. But that was not the only vector we could have chosen. We could have chosen the vector 2, 4. That would have also worked. If you multiply 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4, and 4 times 1, that's positive 4, and if you add these together, you'd still get 0. So this is another one that would have worked. But technically there's an infinite number, but they're all going to be parallel to the original. And this is represented by this eigenspace. And this eigenspace is called E3, to represented by that third, the eigenvalue 3. And this is the set of vectors V such that AV is equal to 3V. Now in general, we don't actually do anything with these eigenspaces, but this identifies that yes, there are infinite numbers of eigenvalues that'll work. However, in your homework, it's your job just to find one of them. It doesn't matter which one you find, you have to just find one of them. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's try another example. Consider the transformation T mapping R2 to R2 defined by this matrix. The first thing we want to be able to do is to find the associated eigenvalues. And to find these eigenvalues, we have to look at the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero, and that's zero the scalar. Now I'd like to cut out some of the steps that I showed last time. In our last example, I showed all the manipulation of how to get from the equation a minus lambda i here, but I'd like to just skip to this entry here, that when we subtract lambda i from a, we always subtract it off of the main diagonal. This will save us a good amount of work. So, the determinant of a minus lambda i is going to look like 3 minus lambda 1 1 3 minus lambda and we want this to equal 0 and now because again this is a 2 by 2 matrix the determinant is easy to find it's the product of the main diagonal minus the product of your off diagonal. So this will be 3 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 1 equals 0. And if we multiply this out, I think we get 9 minus 3 lambda minus 3 lambda, so minus 6 lambda plus lambda squared minus 1 equals 0. Or if we rewrite this in descending order, combine like terms, I think we get lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 8 equals 0.
we're looking for solutions to this quadratic which happens to be factorable as lambda minus 2 and lambda minus 4. This gives our two eigenvalues lambda 1 equals 2 and lambda 2 equals 4. It does not matter if you switch the order of these if you call one of them lambda 2 and one of them lambda 1 or you switch it because individually we're just looking for two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. It doesn't matter which order you find them. Okay, now for your eigenvectors. You want to look at a minus lambda i times some unknown vector x is the zero vector. No, since we know lambda, we know i, and we know a, the only thing we don't know in this equation is what that eigenvector is. So let's look for those eigenvectors now by substituting in each lambda. So we'll start with lambda 1 equals 2. If lambda 1 is equal to 2, then a minus lambda i, remember, this always subtracts lambda off of your main diagonal only. So be 3 minus 2 is 1, 1, 1, 1, times some vector which has components x, y is equal to 0. Now as a nice check just to make sure we don't make any errors, remember a minus lambda i, this matrix, must be singular. Means that the inverse does not exist, or it also means that the determinant has to equal zero. And again, there's a couple ways you can do this, but you should take a visual inspection or a quick calculation just to make sure that this matrix is singular or the determinant is zero. So here, notice your determinant, the product of this diagonal, which is one, minus the product of your off diagonal, which is one, and this is zero. So we can verify the determinant is zero. Or verify that this matrix is singular by noticing that one column has to be a multiple of another column. That also works as a nice inspection. But we're looking for solutions to this equation. So now we're trying to find a vector x, y that when you multiply it by this matrix, you get back the zero vector. And for two by two matrices, this can generally be done by inspection. And if it helps, write this out as x times your first column plus y times your second column. And this has to equal the zero vector. By inspection, let's find this vector x. And I'll generally let x equal one the first value. If this is 1, then what does y have to be so that when you look at the entries in this first row, you could look at the second row if you like, I just always look at the first row, so the entries in this row end up being 0. And I notice that if x is 1, then if y is negative 1, then you have 1 minus 1 is 0. So I'm going to take 1, negative 1, to be the associated eigenvector that goes with lambda 1 equals 2. Okay, now if this makes sense, I'd like you to find the next eigenvector on your own. Find the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 4. So if you could pause your video, work this out, and come back and let's see how you did when you're done. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I hope you paused your video and worked this out. Let's see how you did. 
we're looking for the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 4. So remember now we have to write our matrix. And this is always going to be the matrix created when you subtract that eigenvalue off of the main diagonal. So when you subtract 4 off the main diagonal you get negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, times some vector x, y, and what we get back is the zero vector. And I'd like you to be able to do this by inspection. However, if doing it by inspection in this form is a little tricky still, feel free and write it as a matrix product where it looks like, or a linear combination maybe, x times the first column, y times the second column. So we're looking for something that when you multiply it by negative 1 and then multiply y by positive 1 and maybe add these values it will get 0. Now I, I look at the first two entries in the first row, but you could have looked at the second row, it won't matter. And I notice if I take the vector to be 1, 1, then we'll get back 0, 0. This is our second eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 4. Now we show the eigenspaces. Remember, the eigenspaces is a visualization of all the different eigenvectors we could have chosen if we didn't choose the two that we chose. What I'm trying to say is the eigenvectors are not unique. There are an infinite number of eigenvectors that will work for each eigenvalue. However, they will all be parallel to each other. They'll all be scalar multiples of each other. What I mean is I could have chose the vector 2, negative 2, or I could have chosen the vector 3, negative 3. All of these will work as eigenvectors. However, we just want to find one, so we found this one, and now I'm going to represent all the eigenvectors that we could have chosen by looking at the eigenspaces. Now the vector 1, negative 1, moves 1 in the x direction, negative 1 in the y direction, and so 1, negative 1 is a vector that points in this direction. Now the eigenspace will be all the vectors that are parallel to this. This red line represents your eigenspace. This is the eigenspace associated with the vector or the eigenvalue 2 and it represents all of the vectors V such that your matrix A times V is 2V. It's all the vectors that when you multiply it by A that when you apply this transformation they're a scalar multiple of itself. Similarly, grab your vector 2, which is the vector 1, 1. It points here. But this is not the only eigenvector that we could have used. We also could have used the vector 2, 2, or negative 3, negative 3. All these vectors would have worked, and those are represented by the eigenspace that's associated with this eigenvalue. It's parallel to the original vector that you found and can be described as E4 and it's all the vectors V such that AV is equal to 4V. Okay. I'd like to try one more example like these two that we've done, but I'd like to give you a moment to do this one on your own. 
I would like you to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors associated with the transformation that maps R2 onto R2 defined by this matrix of transformation. So if you could duplicate the work we did in our last two examples, find your eigenvalues, find some associated eigenvectors, show me your eigenspaces. I'll see you back here in a moment uh, after you work on this, um, and we'll see how this goes. Okay, I hope you paused your video and found your eigenvalues and eigenvectors and your eigenspaces. Let's see if we can confirm. Let's first find our eigenvalues. Here we'll always look at the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. And this is zero the scalar because determinants are numbers. a minus lambda i will always subtract lambda off the main diagonal. So two minus lambda, four, negative one, negative 2 minus lambda. This has to equal 0. And again, because it's a 2 by 2 matrix, your determinant is going to be the product of your main diagonal minus the product of your off diagonal. So this will be 2 minus lambda, negative 2 minus lambda, minus negative 4 and I'll multiply this out this will be negative 4 minus 2 lambda plus 2 lambda plus lambda squared plus 4 Notice that when you combine similar terms, the negative 2 lambda and the positive 2 lambda will cancel. Similarly, the negative 4 and the positive 4 will cancel. Which reduces down to lambda squared is equal to 0, which gives us a single eigenvalue in this example. The only eigenvalue we get is 0. Now this is really interesting because remember the eigenvalues are found to make this matrix be singular. We're looking at a minus lambda i and we're knowing this has to be singular. However, if your lambda is zero, this means that your matrix must have already been singular. So look at your original matrix A and take your determinant. Notice here that the debt of A would be negative 4 minus negative 4, which is 0. It means that your original matrix was already singular. And this is going to happen anytime you get a 0 as an eigenvalue. It means your original matrix was already singular. In general, these eigenvalues force your matrices to be singular. Okay, let's go look for our eigenvectors now. Again, we look at the equation a minus lambda i times some vector x is the zero vector. And for the eigenvalue 0, we'll be subtracting 0 off of the main diagonal, which leaves your original matrix. And we're looking for a vector x with components x, y, that when we multiply by this matrix, we get back the 0 vector. And generally, again, we can do this by inspection. But what helps me look at this by inspection is to know that I'm looking for some value that I can multiply by the first column of A, 
some value that we can multiply by the second column of A that will give us back 0, 0. Again, you can use any row. I always like using the first row. So I say, what do I multiply by 2? And what do I multiply by 4? So that when I add these together, I get 0. And I'm going to say, well, what if x is negative 2? If x is negative 2, then this product will be negative 4, which means this product has to be positive 4. So I'm going to say, well, let's let y equal 1 then. And this is your eigenvector. And because I only had one eigenvalue, we only get one eigenvector in this case. Now let's show the eigenspace. Remember, we, in our class, we're not going to be doing anything with the eigenspace. This is just a visualization acknowledging that we didn't have to pick the vector negative 2, 1. There are lots of other eigenvectors that we could have picked. For example, we could have picked the vector positive 2, negative 1. That would have worked as well. If you did positive 2 times if x is 2, then this first one would be 4. And if y is negative 1, then this would be negative 4, and they would add to get 0. So, so there's others that we could have picked. But if we pick the vector negative 2, 1, this would be negative 2 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction. It'd be a vector to, that points to that coordinate. it'd be this vector. But the eigenspace represents every other vector that we could have picked, but it's going to be a line parallel and through that same line that we drew. This is your eigenspace, and it's the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue 0. And it represents all of the vectors v such that a v is equal to 0 v. Notice that these are not the 0 vectors, but they are vectors that when you multiply by a, you get 0 v back. Or to put it another way, these are all the vectors v such that a v is equal to 0. They're all the vectors that live in the eigenspace 0. OK, I hope this is helpful. I'm going to stop this video here, and I'm going to do two more videos to represent the last couple examples in our guided notes. So I'll see you in those videos. I'll see you in a little bit.